What we're going to do now is have a chat about readmissions. Put your hands up in the chat somehow if you have questions about readmissions, because we're going to go through and talk, and not the spoiler of spoilers, <laughs> and we're going to talk about readmissions and how they work, because the readmissions are really the main way that you're going to be able to play Wreck Busters, which means every single time you sit down at the table, you're going to be able to have a unique experience. You may never do the same readmission twice, let alone the same group of heroes twice as all the heroes we have already unlocked. So you're going to have a different play type, like playthrough, different gameplay experience every single time. And we want to share with you guys the first, for the first time, some of the examples of cards that we are currently playtesting and, and working through. Yep. Would you like to give us a bit of an overview on how you start readmission setup? Uh, so raid missions set up uh, well. There's there's two there's two ways you start or two things you start with. There's your mission and your map, and the map is uh, an image that uh, shows you something like like this. Mm -hmm. Tells you where all the spawn points are, and then if there's any special items or objectives, it tells you where they're going to be in the in the map. Mm -hmm. That we, they're carefully balanced to make sure that when you get to an objective, you've at least encountered some resistance. Um, and then um, the next thing you need then is a, uh, a scenario that tells you about the what these various mission things mm -hmm. are um, that's the uh, the, um, the objective the objective yeah yep. 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 and then uh, we also have a faction card and the faction then tells you which which set of enemies you're facing so at the moment um, we're, we're set up for what looks like a bit of a Gisela setup she mm -hmm. has a lot of 6xx on the board um, uh, sorry a lot of Vril type creatures mm -hmm. on the board like the 6xx the 601 uh, then Obviously, General Wolf is a lot more mech-based, so he has Sturm Soldats and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you, you then, once you've completed your mission and set your map up, you can then draw a team card. And the team gives you certain bonuses for certain types of play. So, for example, the, the thing we played with earlier today was a stealth. That, that A stealth team would get more stealth bonuses and abilities. And then after that, once you've selected your team, you then choose the heroes that you're going to fit into that team to carry on and, and yep. complete your, uh, your objectives, so hopefully. That's a summary, but let's actually look at what would happen if we do one. Now, to be clear, we're going to show you guys some prototype cards that we've been tweaking and playtesting with. These are definitely not final. In the heroic pledge, before any stretch goals, any of the new Nazi bosses, real meisters and such get added, we are at, we're putting in the game four maps, four objectives, four factions, and four team cards for the heroes. So that's four, 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 and four. But we are going to hopefully expand, well, we're definitely going to expand on that, not hopefully, we're definitely expanding on that to offer loads and loads of different combinations. That's before you start picking your heroes, picking what your team's going to be, uh, picking your starting skills and your items, all that stuff. That comes later. This is all setting up for a unique raid mission every single time. So. Uh, I am watching you tonight, Ed, but just you're so pretty. If I start looking at you, I can't stop looking at you, you know, man? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Right. So in front of me, uh, let me grab, I'm going to grab Gisela. So you guys have all seen this before. This is Gisela Gruber's uh, stat card. So this tells you when she acts in her initiative. So when she acts, when she's on the board, her name tells you her ranged weapon attack, her melee weapon attack, her armor. It also tells you her special ability that gives all Nazi soldiers in the room two defense uh, buh, 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 this turn and Gugella will attack the nearest hero and also has the card ability, though this one's going to be reworked slightly, which means she'll actually stay away from here. She's going to be a backline commander. And on the back of her card, we have her secondary side. So whenever you wound her and take her down once, you have to go through and fight her again. So she's going to have slightly different stats. This is her wounded side. You're going to have to fight her for a second time. Now, this is her stat card, which we've shown you guys before. If you watch the Let's Plays of Beast of War Trick Track, you'll have seen these kind of cards before. What you will not have seen are these, these beautiful, beautiful things. So let me start with what I want to start map map mission faction what, what do you start with, I would start with a map myself start with the map right so bear in mind these are still very much prototypes and um, what I've got in my hand here are just some raid mission cards with maps in the back my camera's a little bit zoomed in I might turn this sideways actually just so you guys can there we go slightly better so I've got two examples in my hand of course there'll be four of each before we even start looking at stretch goals and expansions and such and here we have in the depths, this is map number two, with a raid map set up. And this will show you all of the uh, objective spawn points. In this case, we have a Z with an X 
we have a Y. It'll show you all the Nazi spawns and the levels, one, two, one, three, two, for example, how difficult you expect the enemies in each room to be. It'll show you all the guard points. So this is the key locations that the Nazis will flock to and hold if you actually, once they find out you're there, they'll attempt to hold these points. And usually these are places that'll stop you getting in or out or getting to your objectives you want. And it also tells you everything you need to know about entrances, exits, and the doors and the level of these doors. Compare that to the lair. So this is a map that you will have already seen in our Let's Play. So this is one of our first maps where we really kind of fleshed out the guts of the game. This is just to give you an example of, again, different spawn points, different doors. Again, different objectives with X, Y, and then over here we have Z. Different, um, all, sort, all sorts of different kind of parts that make these completely different from each other. And you'll see it's hard to make out possibly in the shine of the card, but these are flipped over bunker tiles similar here because this is the entrance to the bunker and then we have castle tiles up here and don't forget there'll be 28 double-sided tiles in the heroic pledge alone okay so that's what's that times two I don't 56 know. there you go i can't do math 56 different options that we can play with to design lots of maps so these are just the first two so you can either shuffle shuffle these up so the four maps that we start with initially you can shuffle them or you can pick the one you want to yeah, go with it's your choice really but uh, obviously for more random experience shuffling and then uh putting it face down if you also then went and placed your fa faction face down it's quite a surprise when you open them both up mm -hmm. uh, to, to work out what you're doing in the so I'm going to take this decision for you guys because because we have it set up in front of us. Let me bring it back up. I'm going to choose the in the depths because this this is actually the map that right now we have the the rough layout set up right here. So let's say for example we choose the oops that's the wrong camera. There we go. The in the depths uh, card for the map. What we then need to choose. What would you recommend next? Um, next I would go with the mission so that we know what we're looking for okay. in the in the depths. So next we will choose ourselves a mission again. I have another two mission cards, but again, you will have more of these in the full game. So here we have our raid, I'll get that out of the way. So raid card with a nice little symbol. These are just prototype, of course. These will not be final. We're looking to improve these more. And um, this gives you an idea of what your objective is going to be. And we have two potential options. So here we have misinformation. After getting hold of a memorandum from Berlin, High Command has employed a master forger to falsify orders commanding the Rillmeister to abort their operations. The forged document is a perfect imitation and it's the right buster's job to get it to the Rillmeister's desk. So this is actually, you're taking something in, you know roughly where yeah, it's got to yeah. go and you've got to drop it off. That's right, yes. Uh, I think it's on one of, one of it's a specified point as well. So I'll go a little bit further. So we can see there's a setup section where you would modify any additional map components, anything you had to do to the map. In this case, you actually wouldn't have to make any changes. But it also specifies that you'll use the objective item, which, is, which in this case is the imitation document that's going to hopefully convince the real monsters to stop their research. And you'll use this at the interest point Y. So specifically, this will tell you, if you look back at the map we've chosen, this is where you've got to go. So I'll bring the map back. So here we go. Thank you, Steve. So we look back to the map that we've chosen. This is going to tell us that because we've chosen this misinformation, we actually have to get to here from the entrance down in the bottom left, make our way through probably one of these two packs. So yeah, I'll bring Steve's way ahead of me. That's where you'd be heading. And you'd have to make your way from the entrance over here, either through sort of round this way or through sort of this way. So you're actually a little bit you know, kind of cornering off the, the one priority HQ area. The downside being there's actually two barracks. There's a barracks on one side and another barracks on the other side of this very important office. So this side of the map comes with its own difficulties that the other side of the map would kind of differ from. The other side of the map actually has some higher level doors. It has some high, more twos and some large threes. So this side of the map you might not have to deal with unless you have, we're going to get ahead ourselves a little bit, but mm -hmm. room features and other little side things that might appear. But we'll talk about that in a future update. Yeah, there's also lesser objectives as well in these areas, so that's why they're harder to get to. There might be something there that might, if you, particularly if you're if you're playing a campaign. Obviously, this is a raid, but if you're playing a campaign, this might help on a later mission. So there's always that get your objective, but perhaps there's more that I can do during this this mm -hmm. particular game to. Fantastic. 
So let me grab then, oh, sorry, I didn't finish the bottom of that actually. At the very bottom of this, of course, there's a stores section. And this stores section is very simple in this case. It just comes with one objective item, which in this case would be the fake.ca, the fake, the fake file that you're leaving to give the commands of the real message to stop their operation. So this is something that you will take into your supply and will add, let me bring it in. Actually, Steve's, Steve's way ahead of me. He's the best assistant ever. Ed, you should be <laughs> learning from this. So for example, we can nominate that Claudine will start with the file. She will start with the orders that we need to get to the HQ. And this is this is down to her, down to the players to decide who's going to look after this precious document because that's going to really dictate who you're protecting, who you're trying to get there, unless you start throwing it or passing it off to each other as you're kind of running through an American footballing the whole thing. That's up to you guys. That's not my strategy, but it could be yours. You never, you never know. So let's pause for a second. Let's say, for example, we're back again. We've chosen this map, this is the layout, this is the, the, the readmission map we've chosen. But instead of misinformation, uh, we do have the find the dossier objective. So in this case, we have uh, Enigma decrypts refer to a prior correspondence containing logistical information about the transit of real weapons to Wolfensburg. I can't say that. Wolfensburg? I can't say it. It's Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. There you go. If the Reichbusters can find this dossier, then the High Command can plan an attack on the convoy and stop these weapons of mass destruction from reaching the front line. Set up. Take the three objective items, shuffle them, and place a face down objective item on each of the points of interest X, Y, and Z. The objective, find the dossier. And this time in your stores, you get two random items from the item pool to start the mission with. And this is something that will go into your item pool, which you as players then need to split up between your heroes and decide how to best make use of those items. So if we refer back to the map, if we were going to place the three items, Steve, where would we be putting them? Well, the, the points of interest are the same because it's the same map. So you have X, Y, and where was Z is yeah, down so here. Z, Z is uh, just outside a camera shot. Just yeah. here. Just here. Just, <laughs> just, 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 just there somewhere. Just yeah, here. Just there. <laughs> just here. Uh, X would be here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it would actually be there. there. And then no, Y. There, there, yeah. and there. Awesome. Yeah. So depending on the map, then depending on the, the mission, the actual objective you choose, you're going to get completely different choices to go for, or not choices if you randomise it, of course. What do we have to choose next? Well, before you do that, I'd just like to point oh, yeah, out yeah. that um, wi with this different different mission, we knew that we'd got to get here for the, for the mm -hmm. first mission yeah. to do what we needed to do. With this mission, suddenly now we're facing three different points. Now you've got another question, how do we take this map or travel through this map so mm -hmm. we can get to all three points? And this is where the doors with the locks and the three on become important because these are harder to get through. If you don't have a lock, they take twice as long to break through. Mm -hmm. So then you, you're also noisy, so they bring more patrols towards you. So this, this, this actually, just this one change to a different scenario changes this game massively yep. because you've now got to get to three scenarios. If you're lucky, you could get the, the, the dossier straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, perhaps a quick game, but then that, this is where the alarm starts to become important and late game fighting through to get to your final dossier and then drag it to the nearest exit. So just that one change has made a massive difference yep. to the game you're playing. Mm -hmm. And to me, the, the fun of that is, is randomizing it. I want to have a random map, I want to have a, a random objective, I want to reveal them at the same time, and a random faction, and I want, to, I want to shuffle them up, and I want to just go, okay, I've got Gisela, I've got the bunker map, and I've got misinformation, let's set it up, and then as a team, let's then look at how we're going to deal yeah. with it. Like, that's the fun of the fair for me. Yeah, that, that, that first talking and chatting about yeah. how you're going to do it is... is quite an interesting time because there's also the divvying up of the, of the spoils yeah. <laughs> so for example uh, whoever plays Sarge is normally well I need plenty of grenades I've got to charge forward and all this so it, it, it just sort of encourage you to take your character's side a bit when yeah. you when you divvying stuff up. This, this is the thing, and because every time you set it up, it's going to feel a little bit different. The people who have one-track minds, who are just like blowing stuff open, kicking doors in, uh, those players are going to have to adapt a little. You're not going to be able to play the same with every single map and, and the mission that you undertake. Um, so, next. Next is, is factions, yes. So the thing, sorry. I'm a bit keen, I'm a bit keen. No, no, go ahead, I'm a bit calm keen Calm down, calm down, it's just a faction. <laughs> so the thing about taking factions next is, uh, your, your final choice of card is your team. And it's always wise to pick your team after you know what you're facing. Mm -hmm. Because if your faction is, is a, a, a lot of, um, say, explosive characters, mm -hmm. then having a lot of range to keep them at bay is important. Yeah. Gotcha. So picking your team after that is, is a okay. better idea. I've actually never thought about that. Because I've never, I've never sort of been able to... I've always told what I'm playing. The, the, the developers are like, come and play a game to make as, choices. and I'm like, oh. <laughs> they won't let me run wild. Anyway, so we have 
again two but again in the heroic plays there'll be four of every one of these cards to start before we kind of add more in or add the expansions in so here we have two raid enemy faction cards and on the flip side we have two very very different units now as i showed you before this was Gisela, and this is Gisela's stat card gives you all the information how she plays on the tabletop this though is just one of Gisela's and I say that again just one of Gisela's possible uh, sort of faction kind of I guess what's her like loadout was the Load word out, use, but it's what it's what she has available to her at that given time yeah, to yeah. deal with threats it's what she's currently working on so here we'll see Gisela has Nazi officers, Nazi soldiers, Experiment 601s, Experiment 6XX, tracking bombers, which explode, as you can well <laughs> point it out, Steve. Which she has zombies, Nazi scientists, and Nazi dogs. And you'll see this very handy-dandy little quick reference. So if you don't want to fill up your table with you know, all of these gorgeous-looking stat cards, you can take it away and only refer to them for special rules. This will give you, whenever you're attacking, this will give you the base stats you need to go and hunt them down if you manage to remember everything. Very importantly though, though it's small here, the reason it's small is because you only need it at the very start of the game. This right hand column is key. It's so, so, so critical because this tells you how many of each type of these units Gisela has available to her. So for example, four officers, 12 soldiers, she has four 601s, 10 6XXs, two tracking bombers, 12 zombies, four Nazi scientists, and two Nazi dogs. From a gameplay experience, for anyone that hasn't played it at Essen or, see, or really watched the, 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 the playthroughs that were done at Beast of War, can you talk briefly about why the number of units can be so impactful when you're playing? Uh, well, the, uh, as a lot of these games do, uh, Reich Busters has the, um, the, the, the rule that if there's no mini there to, to spawn, mm -hmm. it doesn't spawn. So this is a way that we can make the game less or more difficult mm -hmm. um, so for example um, you can put in more zombies into the game because the zombies are basically these mindless things that you can keep chopping on and they just keep biting you until you score a really high hit on them then that can make the game uh, slower it can make it more complex and more um, difficult more difficult to complete um, and then other factions uh, for instance this is Gisela's mm -hmm. Gruber uh, sorry Wolf's, Wolf's faction is very mech based and so you get the Sturm Soul that's coming out, and if you get four of those on the table, we don't often get off the table when there's four Sturm Soul <laughs> um, <coughs> Whenever one of those is drawn from the spawn deck, it's always, oh, oh you know. So, so yeah, the, this is a way of, of giving, it also gives a different flavor to each, uh, each faction because uh, in effect, you're, you're saying, well, you know, uh, this, is, this is quite an easy faction mm -hmm. because you've got this, but the difficulty here is the zombies. The yeah. zombies can foul you up, they can slow you down, they get in your way. Um, and they're hard to kill, so they, 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 they are quite a difficult thing to yeah. overcome. And this is the thing, the because Wright Busters has so many different types of units, and I can tell you right now in stretch goals, there are going to be more new types of units never seen before still to come, I promise you that. And because we have so many different types of units, removing one type and adding another, or increasing vastly the number of uh, potential spawns of a unit type completely changes the feel of how the enemy faction, the Nazi Vrilmeisters, work against the heroes because 12 zombies hit much, much harder than four. Yeah, because yeah, the combat is, um, if, if you get more than one uh, an enemy attacking you, mm -hmm. you f the first one scores the full value, which yeah. is on the, on the faction card, yeah. and then the, the second one scores half that value, and each one after scores half. So. We've had times when, we, with, with three defence dice, you've got to beat 24 attack when you're playing <laughs> zombies. Yeah, because that's the thing. It doesn't work yeah. very often. One Nazi soldier attacking you is a four. Yes. Two Nazi soldiers attacking you, six, yep. three is eight, four is ten. So yep. the more of those you're allowed to gang up on the board and the more available critically to the faction, the more hurt you can potentially get. Yes, into. that's yep. true, yeah. So that's Gisela. Let's have a look, conversely, at one, just one of General Wolf's cards. So this is... General Wolf with his Iron Wolf faction loadout. Um, so obviously you see that they're the same. They're, they're, they're noted F1 and F2, just for very quick faction references. But again, these are prototypes. These are things that we will continue to improve and develop on. So first up, 
He has Nazi officers, Nazi soldiers, so again, much as expected, you'd expect those units early on in your missions. Then he has the Sturm assault and the Sturm gunner. So this is, this is the hammer and this is the heavy gunner. These are the mechs that uh, General Wolf has been working on. Notice he does not have the Experiment 601s and the Experiment 6XX because that's what Gisela has been working on. He does have tracking bombers, but importantly, look, he doesn't have two. He has four tracking bombers because, of course, these are mechanized. These are his babies. He also has zombies, but less, I believe. Yes, yeah. he has only eight versus Gisela's 12. Uh, we then have Nazi scientists and Nazi dogs. He also has more dogs available to him because he's the kind of guy that likes to keep uh, pets by his side to do all his running around for him. He's not much of a, uh, an exerciser as General Wolf. And again, this gives you guys just a feeling of, it's hard to really convey this on the card, but the difference in play style is really, really noticeable on the board, which means every time you play, the faction you choose, whether it's one of General Wolf's, whether it's one of Gisela's, where is, whether it's one of Heinrich, who we unlocked with yep. his mutated arm just shortly ago, or whether it's one of Heinrich Gruber, Gisela Gruber's brother, who we teased via Beast of War earlier today, I'm going to tell you right now, he's coming soon, and he's going to be, can I say this? Problematic? He's going to be a Kickstarter exclusive, first of all. He's not going to retail. And he's going to take advantage of having a lot of death on the table, is all I'll say. So you guys are going to just have to, once that unlocks, you're going to have to read all that update about Heinrich, because he's going to really feel different to these guys. So when you play, you're going to have to choose your map. Your, or randomize your map. You then have to choose or randomize your objective for that mission, and then you will choose or randomize the faction that you're up against. So you'll then take all the minis out yep. of the box and ready them on the table to form the pool. Yeah, so you match the minis to the numbers on the, the faction yep. card. So for example, you just, you just take that number out of the box and leave the rest in the box, because then the rule of you can't spawn more than you've got comes into play. Yeah. And, that's, and that gives us a lot of control and a lot of flexibility to give you different play experiences and different gameplay options every single time you sit down to a raid mission, which is just huge. Like it, it means that you're not just changing the tile layout, you're not just changing what you're trying to do, you're also changing what you're up against, and that's before you talk about your heroes. Seriously, like I cannot talk to you guys enough about how much fun you're going to have with all these different combinations. Talking about heroes. Heroes. Next bit. Next is your team. <laughs> so you've got, you now know what difficulties you're facing, and now it's time to choose a team. Yeah, because at this point we would get the pool of minis, yeah. we'd set up, we'd set up the, the tiles and the board, and then we'd say, right, we know what either our direct objective is, or what our possible objective is, or where part of the map we might have to focus on, or yeah. what part we might have to visit. Then we choose our team. Then you choose your team. So here I have, again, very much prototype examples here. This is just so you guys have an idea. We've got some Right Busters team cards. Again, I have two in hand, but these will be uh, four again in the, in the Hero Work Pledge before we then look at expanding that with expansions or additional content. The first one, which one do, actually, which one do you want to start? Actually, uh, blue or red, chat, blue or red, blue or red, quick, 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 blue or red. Let's see it, quick, come on. Anyone watching this YouTube later is not going to get cooking turkey. God dang it, I want some turkey. Blue, 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 blue. How did you guys all know my favorite color was blue? Fantastic. Sorry, Steve. Looks like Blue's going to get yeah, it. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, that's blue. fine. Blue. Yeah. Sorry, Zod. Red goes faster, says Tesla. That is an orc. That is an orc man right there. Right. Blue team. Team Falcon. Here is Team Falcon. I, I don't, I, I'm not going to try and do the Latin, Steve. Can you try and do the Latin? Uh, De morti. <laughs> uh, Obumbratio. Do you remember what this means? I can't remember. Yes, it means from the sh death from the shadows. Death from the shadows. So this is Team Falcon. They come with a team pool of one defensive, one attack, and one wild heroic straight out the bat. All Team Falcon members come with a special ability. All Team Falcon members may use their action card modifiers to help their teammates to make uh, I'm sorry, help teammates in melee combat. Could you grab me a couple of cards that that would be useful in actually, Steve, while I chat with the rest? What also comes are the stores. So these relate directly, again, let me bring one back in, to the mission card. So for example, we have stores that come from the mission, the objective that you choose. Then we have the stores. What? Oh, oh look at you. Look at you translating it at the bottom, Ash. Shush, shush. That, you know what? That, that, the shows, that shows just how good quality our stream is. Isn't it awfully nice that you can see the tiny little text that I can't even see at home? 
<laughs> so in the stores, when you choose this team, you will get certain skills. That's strong, silent, off Dutch, recon and evasive. And you will get a certain set of items, disguise kits, two pairs of sneakers, four random items from the item pool. Choosing this team will dictate your style of play, the skills if you're able to pass out to the heroes. And it's worth saying, these skills will be in addition to the base skill that comes with your hero. So for example, if you choose Claudine and she has Rage, you can decide that she's going to be both Rage and Strong or Rage and Evasive. You'll be able to decide as the players which heroes will benefit most by customising their base skills with that of Team Falcons. This is going to allow you to not only customise the heroes you play with, but the style of team that you want to take it. It, it, it is possible um, with that as well that you could actually choose to make one of your characters like Uber and give mm -hmm. them four skills and just take one yourself. <laughs> that really brings some interesting differences to the game when yeah. you've got one character who's maxed out on everything and then everybody else is just running around trying to make sure that they get to the front of the line, open the doors and all that sort of thing. So, so anyone at home that's asking, two heroes, three heroes, four heroes, or if you really want to go Ace Venture on it and try and do one hero, these are some of the things that are going to help you balance that and give you a really good gameplay experience all the time because you have to work as a team whether you're playing with two three or four players or even with one player if you want to take on one hero good luck you're going to need some skill <laughs> if you want to play two heroes that's what we really recommend because we'll be balancing primarily to that but we want to yeah so team falcon on the table come with this ability that they may use their action card modifiers to help their teammates in combat yeah, we'll start with the bottom card sorry. start with the bottom card yeah Steve's gone. So Claudine plays um, Assassin, which means she can make move one and then make an attack. So in this case, because Claudine knows about this special ability that her team has, she moves into an area with an enemy and makes a melee attack. Mm -hmm. However, she's not done very well this time and she's rolled two blanks. Mm -hmm. uh, at this very time, because uh, Red Hawk is in the same area, Red Hawk can put, can put down a, a critical, which gives her plus two and the uh, chance to re-roll an, an extra dice as the dice explodes. Uh, so we do this, that means that there's a score of two on the board. However, when she rolls her extra dice, she gets another blank as well. Mm -hmm. uh, roll, rolling in Ed style, if you're there, Ed. Ed style Ed rolling. Style. And then finally, because also we have uh, Sarge on the same square, Sarge says, OK, well, I'll give you two extra dice. He drops his card down. And uh, this time, uh, Claudine rolls two extra dice and manages to destroy the zombie in front of her. And this entire gameplay experience will only be possible when you guys decide to roll out Team Falcon and take on this specific hero team combination trait, this ability that's going to give you this new level of tactical gameplay that's going to open up ways to react and deal with threats. Yeah, that's, that's the idea. Also bear in mind though that everything is still very much in development. So. Yes! <laughs> I want these all to be finalised right now. You guys think you want the game, I want the game so badly. Like, I am chomping at the bit to finalise this and get playing. So, yes, please keep in mind, everything is prototype, and even after the campaign into the Pledge Manager, when we open it in January, we will still likely be developing the game and still sharing our updates with you guys as we do that. We'll always keep you informed. If it's your first Mythic Games uh, Kickstarter and it's the first time backing, this is the level of love and support we want from you guys and we give it to you and we want the same, the same back whenever we talk about developing and improving the game because your feedback and your support of us means the absolute world. Right, can we talk about Team Red now? Yes, you can. Mm. Team Red. Team the better team. Harrier. The better team? This is your, th that's my play style, I must admit. Because that's, it's still thinking it's cool and plus disguise kits. Like the disguise kits are, oh, I've got any disguise kits to hand. Oh, uh, I don't see one on the table. I don't they're see one. I don't definitely one of my favourite items because they, uh, they're they so overpowered at the minute, it's untrue because essentially you just go, oh no, don't shoot, I'm a German. And they go, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> they go, oh, it's fine. So that's it. The Skies gets one of the items that, in, oh, there it, there it is. One of the items in early gameplay that uh, started off quite fine and was okay. And then over time, <laughs> over time has become ridiculously overpowered. Um, it essentially stops, stop it, Redlam. It essentially stops entire areas activating so whether that stays as it is or, or not in the final game it has changed slightly <laughs> um, the thing is that there's a lot more prior activation now on mm -hmm. on future map squares so this is actually a handy um, thing that you you open the door and the image that we have is, is you're poking your head around the door and quickly having a 
uh, hello, how are you doing? Everything's uh, fine. Everything's good. <laughs> and, you know, and, and actually, for maybe a second or two, that's the feel that you stop the, the people in the room from either going to alert or yep. to suspicious, depending on their current state. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it kind of works, but Ed, get it sorted. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, Mary Dan says, keep it, it's funny. 8.3K to stretch goal. Wow. Ooh, oh, could we hit a stretch goal while we're live? That would be really cool. I really hope we do. Right, Team Harrier. Let's bring it in. So Team Harrier straight away has twice as many heroics from the team pool. So that's two defensive, two attack, and two wild. They have, Steve? <laughs> um, <laughs> come transmit a less datum. I didn't get that, that was from right. What, what that was mean? that one? Forward with power. This team's motto says everything that you need to know about them. Forward a group of power. bruisers <sighs> who think that stealth is a dirty word. Take this team when the brown sticky stuff is likely to hit the round spinny thing really early. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so, these guys come with the ability that once per turn, one Harrier team member may use an action card ranged attack alongside a hero making another range attack in the same area. This is letting you synchronize your fire. Yeah, you can lay down a fusillade. Oh. Fusillade, I think it's pronounced. Then the stores, they come with three skills, counter, taunt, and deadly, and they get five random items from the item pool because they're not the kind of team who really care what they're taking <laughs> to war. They're just going to war. Yeah. yeah. So I'll show them side by side a little bit again so you can just get a, a quick feel. So Team Harrier, very focused on being heroic, being brave, getting into the action, using counters and taunts and responding to being hit and attacked and damaged to then deal damage back to the Nazi units. And they don't really care about their loadout. You're going to have to just take five random items and dish them out between the heroes before you go on your mission. Or you equip up Team Falcon. You take slightly less heroic actions because you're more focusing on evading and staying silent and avoiding damage while using your items to move quickly and avoid detection. And whoops, and using your abilities to benefit each other and ensure success rather than um, trying to show off <laughs> like Team Harrier. Tell me right now, guys, what are you, Team Harrier or are you Team Falcon? Come on, let me, let me hear, I wanna hear some Team Falcons. Team Falcon. Team Harrier. Team, to yeah. what, what a great varsity jacket that would make. make. Team, team Harrier, team yeah. Team Harrier yeah. and Team Falcon. With brick and Falcon, sauge Harrier. on each side of the lapel. <laughs> oh, be wicked. Oh, if the arms were actually guns. <laughs> <laughs> Falcon, Falcon all the way. Away now. Team Boom, I want a jacket, says Bree. Falcon, out. Oh, Falcon, a hairy Falcon? We need, we need jackets, yes, Ed, we need jackets. It seems like Falcon's pretty popular. There was a couple of Harriers in there. Uh, team Boom. Shall we make a Team Boom? Uh, team Grenade? I team think Warren? Team Boom would be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you wouldn't last long in the in the cell section with all Boom. No. So. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a second because something a lot of people have been asking about is how you tweak the difficulty. And we've talked about the missions, the maps, the factions. We've talked about the, the team cards. And these are all things that we can use to help offer you different gameplay and slightly different levels of difficulty. But something a lot of you guys have been um, suggesting, and we actually have heard it, and we were actually already working on it beforehand, is the alarm tracker. Um, now, this is very, very much still in development at the moment. The alarm tracker, as you see it here, is currently set with six rounds of pre-alarm, four rounds of post-alarm, and this means no matter what happens, if you, even if you've been really good and on your best behavior for six rounds, once you get to round seven, the alarm is gonna go off. Someone asked, is it possible to complete objectives and never set off the alarm? Has that ever happened in playtest? We've got to the object, I mean, as I said today, on the yeah. fast playthrough, a, a full stealth team got to the objective, but the, 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 the turn after they got the objective, the alarm went off, so. It's very, so stealth very team unlikely. And had to fight its way out, but that's, that's a really, really rare thing. I mean, and we, we don't get we play the game quite a bit. So. <laughs> so one thing we talked about when it comes to difficulty is we are playtesting, we are tweaking and working. Let me bring this in the shot a bit better. A little bit on making this option a little variable. So instead of having um, six rounds pre-alarm, we could have simply four or five pre-alarm rounds and then have more rounds after the alarm. We could even, as I say, on the other side of this, it's just a prototype right now, but we could print a completely different alarm track or we could make this variable and we've got our snazzy little 3D uh, alarm token now that you guys will see that we unlocked. Thank you for that. I love it. It's just it's just nice to hold and move along. It's it got is. the siren on. I think that's pretty cool. Fondle yeah. factor. Our, our sculptors are amazing. Yeah, they even do alarms amazingly. So 
just so you guys know, we have heard you, we are testing that, but we don't want to say anything official until we're a little bit more happy with just you know, what the impact of that is. Because I think I've spoken to Jack a lot today uh, before the live, and Jack has been writing a lot of updates, including a big update that's going to go out after this live a little later this evening, where we're going to share more detail and more close-ups of the cards for the readmission so you can see that. And he was saying that, yes, we want to we do something with the alarm. There's plenty of flexibility there, especially it's an easy change to adjust the difficulty, but we want it to feel right. We don't want to just, I'll oh, say, three rounds pre-alarm for no reason. It's got to feel good for the game as well. It's, it's, it's simply saying I want a hard game, but you want a game that still feels like you're going on a mission, you're doing heroic things. Yeah. So bear with us on that one. We are working on it. <laughs> Redlam says this campaign is way too awesome to stop after 10 days. Oh, Redlam. Oh, man. Don't worry. Christmas is coming. We'll get our Christmas jumpers on and we'll have some lives with you guys during Christmas. We'll play some zombie dice. It'll be great. So. So. Run through it again very quickly, and then we're going to get on to your guys' questions. We're going to yep. have a chat. So the first thing you'll do, if I grab on, oh, I've been chucking cards absolutely everywhere. I've just been throwing them around. So the first thing you do is you will pick yourself a map. Yep. Let me get these in the right order. A map, then just your so faction, or your, then your oh. mission, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you pick your map. We have two examples here. So in this case, it would be the lair, or it would be in the depths. But again, you will have many more options. Then once you've got your map, you randomize all your pick your objective, so in this case misinformation, or find the dossier. Once you pick your objective, you'll pick or you randomize a faction. So General Wolf, for example, the Iron Wolf, or real experiments of Giselle Gruber, Giselle Gruber, sorry, but there'll be multiple of these in the core box. And then you will pick your team, Team Falcon, Team Harrier, and that's all before you pick your hero. 